Hey guys, it's Zink here with another review. This time, the Protocol of Dronium 1 Quadcopter Drone. For $250, you get 4 replacement blades, a screwdriver, which is used for tightening and replacing various things on the drone, replacement bumpers, a USB charger, Now USB dock for a micro SD card. And now the controller. When I first saw the controller I was kind of shocked because it seemed like a good quality controller. But after some flying it around and getting to use it, I really wasn't impressed anymore. The controller takes four AA batteries in the back and can be accessed via the screwdriver that they give you. They give you a mount that clips onto the controller's antenna. The mount isn't that bad, it lets you angle your phone in whatever way that you feel is comfortable. Now let's quickly move over to the front of the controller here. Now these aren't actual buttons, they're just pieces of plastic that have no function whatsoever. Now as we move around to the body of the drone, at the bottom we find a removable antenna. The antenna is not fully removable but it does just come out. I don't really understand the purpose of it but it's there. Now the back has a little hatch that opens up and this holds the battery for the device and some cables but that's about it. The first time I had concerns about this drone is when I opened up and saw how small the battery really is. In the time that I was testing this drone with the Wi-Fi on while it was transmitting to my phone I was getting anywhere from 2 to maybe 5 minutes of battery life. Now with a drone this size you would think that the battery would be substantially bigger. Here we have an on off switch that turns on and off the device. At the back here we have the micro USB slot. I was actually surprised but they actually include a 4 gig micro SD card with the drone. I thought I'd put some video in of the actual drone flying around. The drone itself isn't actually loud, I would compare it to a bunch of bees flying around. But if you have a drone and if you used it before, you know that it's completely normal sound and you just start tuning it out after a while. Now the controller itself actually doesn't feel all that bad. It feels a little light, but the actual controls for moving up and down and throttling are actually quite smooth. The mount does have a wobble to it when you put your phone into it. Now this may just be because my phone is a pretty big phone, but I would like to think that everyone nowadays has a phone that's about 5 inches in size, maybe a little bigger. Um, but I did notice some wobbling going on when I was piloting the drone. I thought I'd show some actual streaming video. This is what you'll actually see on the phone. Now I found that it actually makes using the phone completely pointless. Um, you can't just fly solely with the phone itself as your main source for viewing. I've tried it and the lag, the further the device gets away from the actual drone itself, the worse the lag and it just becomes unusable at that point. The playback video on the actual device itself isn't that bad. The picture quality does suffer a little. I've noticed um, even well lit areas, you do get a lot of blotchy pixels all over the screen. Uh, maybe I'm just a little bit picky, but for 250 bucks, I kind of want a little more. When I was going over the video, it actually reminded me of a drone I already have. I got it off Amazon for $60, and the video is almost exactly the same. I'll show you what I mean. Now, the Hudson X4 H107C 2.4 gigahertz quadcopter is actually only $60, and the quality of video that comes from it, as I said, is almost the exact same as the $250 quadcopter that I'm reviewing. Um, I normally don't do comparisons in the same video, but with this I just had to show you what $250 is buying you compared to what you can get for $60 on Amazon. One of the positives that this device does have over the $60 one on Amazon is that you're actually able to take pictures, record 
and you can once you get into it you can actually adjust the trim and the speed so just say your copter is veering to the left or veering to the right you're actually able to you know adjust it on the fly which is actually kind of cool and I really do like that another thing I like is you can actually download the video from the quadcopter itself from your phone over the Wi-Fi network that it's transmitting. Um, I have had the app crash on me a number of times and you can actually delete videos. Is this quadcopter really worth $250? In my opinion, I don't think so. It's kind of cool because it's big, but for $60 you can get almost the exact same thing. And you know what, a $60 helicopter, I have dropped that thing from five stories and it is still going. The worst thing that happens is that the blades break. You can buy a bundle of blades on Amazon, I believe for like five or ten dollars. You can buy a protector for it that I have on it and you're not really worried about smashing it. With this $250 one, even when I was testing it, I was constantly worried that I was going to hit it off something and break it and you're just going to be out $250. If you guys like the video, give me a thumbs up, uh, share it, post it, get it out there. I'll leave links in the description below just for both quadcopters, just in case you still do want to go out and buy it, or if you want to go ahead and buy that $60 quadcopter, which 100% recommend. Um, until next time, see you guys later.